Ezra Edmond, everybody. Ezra, Ezra Edmond, give it up for him. What's up, everybody? My name's Ezra. Hi. A couple of weeks ago, I decided to go get a milk marijuana card for the first time, by which I mean like two years ago. And uh, the thing is, like, I went there, I wanted to see what, that, what the whole process was about. And it's kind of crazy because you go to this doctor, doctor, there's a sign on a Sunset Boulevard, there's a picture of this super sexy woman wearing a lab coat. And it says, get your medical marijuana card. Underneath in quotes, it says, actual doctor. <laughs> I'm not going to my doctor for sex. Like, you know, come on, what's the point? But um, so I went there, and the crazy thing is, you go into the doctor, and the doctor, the first thing he says is, like, does medical marijuana work for you? A doctor wouldn't say, like, hey, man, what kind of medicine do you want? Does that work for you? Is that a good medicine? No, you're the fucking doctor. You should be telling me what's good. And then you get the car, which takes like maybe five minutes, and you go to a dispensary, which is like a pharmacy, except you just get to decide what medicine you want. Which is crazy, because you go in and they're like, hey, um, you know, what do you want today? You're like, I don't know, what do you got? They're like, well, do you like the medicine that makes you uh, want to sit on the couch and watch a movie? Or do you like medicine that, you get up, that makes you want to get up and like walk around and like explore shit and have fun? That's not how medicine works. You go to the doctor and you're like, hey doctor, let's have some Xanax. And they go, okay. Not at all, no. Okay. Cool, everybody. <laughs> Let's see, so why are both the Yin Yang twins black? Shouldn't this be the Yin twins? You know? <laughs> if Usher was a Saudi Arabian, where would he live? Yeah, man. Some of you guys get that one. How do illiterate kids proofread their essays? I adopted a nocturnal horse once, but I had to return it because that thing was a nightmare. <laughs> there we go. All right. If your baby needs a stroller, why are you buying it shoes? What's the point? Speaking of shoes, like some people can't get a pair of shoes, yet like fucking horses are born and they're just like, bam, there you go, shoes for life. And kids in Africa are born and they're like, whatever, walk around with fucking blisters, kid. Like why? Are, it's like a horse birthright to get a pair of shoes, you know? I guess you guys don't know what horses are. They're large animals. They have like metal shoes packed to the bottom of their feet, you know? So the other day someone was talking about like their dogs. You guys know people who have dogs and refer to them like their children, right? Yes, that's where you guys say yes. Yes, awesome. So here's the thing, it's like kids are like dogs, but like dogs times a thousand because your kid is never, or rather your dog is never out at like 2 a.m. hanging out with like a shady dude. You know, like you know where your dog is for like 18 years just in your backyard or it's in your house. Your kid could be anywhere doing anything. They're not the same, that's my point. <laughs> that was more of just a uh, fact of life. Sorry, these are all like super fucking new jokes. I read an article today about a guy who wrote a, um, who got, who was on a mailing list, and he got a lot of letters, and he was pissed. So he um, wrote a letter to them that just said, get me off your fucking mailing list. And they published it. They just published it accidentally. They thought it was a submission to like the, uh, the newsletter. So everybody got a letter that said, get me off your fucking mailing list. Bad job. <laughs> <laughs> Did you guys hear about this guy who tried to go to a um, McDonald's drive-thru? The other day, he didn't have a car, so he walked up to the window. And they said, hey, you can't come to the uh, drive-thru window, you gotta go inside, but the restaurant was closed, so you can't get served. And the guy was like, I just want a fucking, I don't know, I was gonna say McBurger, that's not that in McDonald's has, yeah, a fucking cheese, <laughs> cheeseburger, whatever. And um, the thing, this is a true story, the guy went out, walked down the street, there was a woman driving with her kid, he pushed them out of the car, carjacked the car, and didn't drive to McDonald's. He drove straight down the street the opposite direction to a pole. What's the point of that? You guys, you guys, come on, everybody. <laughs> Did you guys hear that Sweden recently legalized masturbation? Like, publicly. Not like privately, that was always probably, uh, probably legal. But the thing is, you can do it publicly now in Sweden, so if you guys take a trip there, keep note of that. As long as you don't look at somebody, that's the one caveat of the rule. This is totally true. Um, the thing is, you can stand in Sweden publicly on a street and just masturbate, and that's fine, but the second you look up, that's a fucking crime. That's insane. What if you're just like jerking off and you look at it like, ah, and people are like, you, police, police, please, you guys heard a loud sound, there's like a truck coming down the street. Yeah. Have you guys ever heard a truck? They're loud, they're distracting. It would distract you from masturbating, maybe not like some of you. Maybe some of you just focused on that, you know? I was watching a Batman and Robin the other day. Yeah. Woo! Batman and Robin! Yeah! Woo! Okay, cool guys. I was watching Batman and Robin the other day, and you know the character Mr. Freeze, played by Arnold Schwarzenegger? Yeah. It's crazy, I was watching this movie, and this is a guy who's like, is like, he's like a giant ice monster. He was transformed into a giant ice monster, which is ridiculous, because his last name was Freeze, before he became a giant ice monster. 
And just by sheer coincidence, he became a giant ice monster, and he goes around, and he like robs people, and he always uses crazy puns, like ice to meet you, or cool down before he kills you. Which is a great thing for a criminal to do, I guess, as you die with like a little bit of a smile on your face. But imagine if you're like, imagine if you're a, uh, you know, a security guard at a jewelry museum. And, um, you know, you're you prepared for your job, you go in every day, you have like your gun, your baton, your taser, and you're ready for like crime, you're expecting someone, or at least prepared for someone to come in and try to steal some jewels. But all of a sudden, one day you're there, and through the fucking wall, a car shaped like a drill comes in. And a giant ice man comes out of that thing, and he looks at you, and he goes, what killed the dinosaurs? And you're like, huh? And he goes, the ice age. And you're frozen. And you're dead. Isn't that crazy? And your family gets like a call and they're like, hey, uh, Steve's not coming over work today. You're like, what happened? Oh my god, is he all right? And they're like, yeah, he's frozen like a, like a popsicle. He's like covered in like blue ice. You guys haven't seen Batman and Robin. Okay, it's from fucking 1998 or whatever. Get with the program. Um, last thing, all right. So, um, so my uncle is the guy who uh, makes Jenga. And I was telling the other day, I was like, hey, I'm single. Um, that's important for the rest of the story. I was, I was like, hey, I'm single. He's like, here, wait, before you even finish that story, here's my idea. What you should do is um, I'll give you a Jenga set, take it to a bar, set it on the bar, set it up. When girls come in, walk over to them and say, hey, would you like to play Jenga with me? Sure bet, works every time. And I was like, no, I don't, I don't really want to do that. You know, That doesn't sound like a great thing. Plus, when it spills all over the bar, it's just going to suck for literally everybody there. And he goes, fine, fine, fine. Well, you don't have to take the Jenga to the bar. You can just keep it at home, and that works too. And I was like, huh? And he goes, yeah, because when you see a girl, just say, hey, do you want to come back to my house and play some Jenga? <laughs> and I was like, well, I don't know. I feel like if you say to a girl, hey, do you want to come back to my house and play some Jenga? And she goes, yeah, you don't even have to own a Jenga set, you know? And if she comes back to your house and is like, where's the fucking Jenga? Then you are in for so much more trouble than you signed up for. Anyway, I'm Ezra Edmund. That's my time. Thank you so much, everybody. One more time for Ezra Edmund, everybody. Ezra Edmund, let it hear it.